Smarty Pants. I hope you have a coat with you. It's freezing here. I came all the way to the North Pole to test out my compass, but now that I got here, it's going crazy. I wonder why. First things first, I'd better find somewhere a little warmer so that we can talk properly. Oh, there, I see a hut. Let's go inside and warm up a little. Whew. Oh, that's much better. Now, if you're wondering why I'm all the way in the snow at the North Pole, it's thanks to a question from our friend Miri. Hey, Miri, tell us what you're interested in learning about. Hi, my name is Miri, and I am eight years old, and I want to know how magnets work. That is an awesome question, Mary. Thanks for sending it in. I really want to answer it with my friend Zach. He actually went to the South Pole to see what his compass is doing. Let's give him a call. Hey, Emma. How are you? I'm a little chilly up here. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And my compass was gone a little crazy. Mine too. Can you tell us why? Definitely. Are uh, Smarty Pants friends there with you? Yup, we're all here. Great. Let's get to exploring the amazing world of magnets. Welcome back, Smarty Pants, to the show that helps you discover amazing and surprising new things, like opening a toy and finding something even cooler inside. And today, we're doing something a little different, right, Zach? Yep, it's awesome to be here, even though here for me is the South Pole and here for Emma is the North Pole. We're on opposite ends of the Earth. And both of our compasses are acting a little weird. So what's going on, Zach? Well, this may take our listeners by surprise, but I know they love surprise facts. When you take your compass to the tips of the Earth, the North and the South Poles, the needles on the compass start pointing in weird directions. It's all that to do with the Earth itself being one giant magnet. Wow. I never thought of the Earth being a magnet. My magnets are on my fridge and in toys. Yes, those are the magnets our listeners are more familiar with. But no matter their size, if it's a fridge magnet or the entire planet, magnets all work in the same way. They all have two sides. One is called a North Pole and the other is called a South Pole. Just like where we are? Yes, exactly. And these two sides of a magnet are actually what makes them stick together. You may have heard the saying, opposites attract. And that's exactly what magnets do. Let's try it. Emma, do you have a couple of magnets handy to try something? I do! Smarty Pants listeners, why don't you guys also grab some magnets and come experiment with us? <laughs> okay, now that everyone has their magnets, let's try putting them together. If they stick, that means that the opposite poles are touching each other. Wait, mine are actually pushing away from each other. Are they broken? <laughs> no, that just means that you are trying to push two north or south poles together. Magnets have a magic way of saying yes, please, if the right sides are close to each other, but also no thanks if the wrong sides are close to each other. We call that attracting and repelling. That is so cool. It's like magnets have manners. They either want to be best friends and hug, or they just shouldn't be too close to each other like they had a fight. And now that you know about attracting and repelling, it's time for one of my favorite magnet games, magnet fishing. Ooh, I like the sound of that. How do we play? First, grab a magnet. Next, find some small objects around house, like paper clips, safety pins, twisty bread guys, some keychains, and other metal objects. But make sure to ask a grown-up if it's okay to use them. Now put all the metal items into a bowl, then dangle your magnet over the bowl to try to catch something. Okay, here we go. Oh, look, I caught a paperclip. But why did the paperclip stick to my magnet and not another object like a coin? Well, not everything is magnetic, even if it's metal. Coins are made from metals like copper or nickel, and these aren't very magnetic. Magnets love certain metals like iron, steel, 
and cobalt. So magnets are picky eaters. Exactly. A metal becomes magnetic when all of its tiny, invisible pieces, called atoms, start lining up and pointing the same way, like a marching band. When they're all in line, the metal turns into a magnet. Certain metals have better marching bands. Others, their marching bands are not so great. Zach, you mentioned before that the Earth is one giant magnet. And so if magnets have two sides, does that mean the Earth has those two? Oh yeah, big time. And that's why Miri sent us on this adventure. The Earth's North Pole and South Pole are just like the two sides of the magnets in your hand. And guess what? That's what your compass is actually looking for. The little needle inside your compass is a tiny magnet. One end always points toward the Earth's magnetic North Pole. So that's how it helps me find direction. The compass is saying, hey, North is this way. Yup. The Earth has an invisible force around it called the magnetic field. You can't see it, but it's always there. Whoa, that sounds cool. What does the magnetic field do? It does a lot. For one, it helps your compass know where to point. But even more amazing, it protects us. The Earth's magnetic field helps block dangerous energy and particles that come flying from the sun. It's kind of like an invisible superhero cape wrapping around the planet. So magnets help protect us from space gulf? Wow. Yep. Without it, life on Earth would be very different and maybe not even possible. That's wild. So now I understand. Magnets aren't just for fridge doors or fishing for paper clips. They're part of the planet itself. That's right. And the next time you use a compass, you'll know it's really a tiny magnet friend following Earth's giant magnetic field all the way to the North Pole. So Mary's question sent us on the opposite sides of the planet's biggest magnet, Well, Smarty Pants, that's a wrap on our magnetic adventure. I've learned so much, and now I just need to figure out one tiny little thing. How to get out of the North Pole without turning into a popsicle. (laughs) Maybe you can use your compass to find the nearest hot cocoa stand. (laughs) If only. I might have to build a sled, harness some polar bears, and follow my trusty magnet friend south. Don't forget your mittens. And a blanket and maybe a portable heater and a very big thermos of soup. Good luck, Emma, and thanks to all of our Smarty Pants listeners and to Miri for sending us on this super cool adventure. Get it? Cool? Oh, Zach. (laughs) Okay, listeners. Until next time, stay curious, stay warm, and always follow your magnetic sense of wonder. Bye, Smarty Pants. Bye. The Hey Smarty Pants podcast is produced by Leora and Navo Cohen and their dad. Our theme music was created by Andre Rossi, and we use different AI voices, like mine, to deliver our content. We invite you to send us questions you want the answer to to our email, heysmartypantspodcast at gmail.com. See you next time.